Okay, today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, how an athlete improves year to year in the Open and what they can expect to see um, as an improvement on their placing um, compared to how they've done in previous years. Yeah, so I think that the rate of adaptation over time is one of the leading indicators of talent in the sport of CrossFit. The people who we consider talented or good don't necessarily start that way, but they get better more quickly than everyone else. So, especially in a sport like this, which is relatively new, where the field is growing every year, where more quote unquote talented people are entering the field every year, where the requirements of the sport are changing every year, those who can adapt more quickly are those who come out on top. Right, so simply looking at, okay, how many places can you climb in a given year? For some people, their rate of improvement, maybe they're getting better themselves, but they're not getting better faster relative to everyone else. Yeah. So those who are getting better more quickly are those who we see uh, continuously showing up to regionals, continuously doing well at regionals. And for someone who is not at that level, but wants to be at that level, then you need to see from them, okay, listen, like you're here now, everyone else is here, they're getting better, so you have to catch them and get better right. than them at a rate that's more quick than they are currently improving themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not just about how good are you yourself, it's how good are you in relation to everyone else. Um, one thing I think has a big effect is the movements that we see in the Open. So people coming out of 2015 who uh, maybe they still haven't got their first ring muscle up and they're like, okay, by next year's Open, I'm gonna have ring muscle ups, this is gonna be great. They work all the way through 2015, beginning of 2016 season, they're ready to go. There's bar muscle ups, there's no ring muscle ups. Well, as an athlete, they might have improved a lot. Maybe they can do five ring muscle ups unbroken, but now they have to do bar muscle ups. And well, they can do one at a time there. So as an athlete, they've improved. As a, using the open as a tester, it's not gonna show that. Yeah, sure, and there's plenty of other, you know, fitness indicators that may improve, but don't actually result in improved open performance, right? I mean, your max deadlift may have gone up a ton. 10 minute assault bike calorie test may have gone up a ton. Yeah. You may be able to run a better 5K. Um, you know, your structural balance may have improved across pushing versus pulling, but those things don't necessarily mean that your shoulder muscle endurance for a power snatch and double unders is any better. Right. So you may have gotten fitter, but your performance in the open is not going to reflect those changes. Yes, and in invariably, the fitter you are, the better you're gonna do in the open. But it, the improvements you've made may not be reflective of that position improvement within the open. And then I think the, the other thing that comes down to is the kind of sticking points that people have for the Open. Um, so some people that are gonna be you know, struggling to get that first bar muscle up. Well, maybe this year they can do bar muscle ups pretty comfortably. That's gonna set them ahead of a big chunk of people that are gonna be in the middle of that uh, leaderboard. Um, you know, the top thousand people can maybe breeze through those reps, no problem. The 1,000 to 15,000 struggle. Well, if you were down in the 10,000s there, you can make a huge jump just by mastering that one movement. Um, so the lower down you were relatively in the leaderboard, the more opportunity there is for you to be making bigger gains. Yeah, and I think that also there's sort of natural tiers that yeah. end up being created based upon uh, some of those sticking points, right? Bar muscle yeah. ups or certain barbell weights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then not even necessarily on those types of things, but say you look at that, um, that thruster bar facing burpee situation as well, right? Where you, you get huge numbers of people clustered in the you know 12 to 13 minute range. You get huge numbers of people clustered in the 15 to 16 minute range. You kind of have these, uh, I guess, settling points um, in terms of the, dis the distribution of scores on those. So based upon the way the open is scored, you may um, be much fitter, but if you have a workout that is not necessarily in your wheelhouse and you end up falling down into that next sort of like tier of scores, yeah. you may pick up, you know, 500, 600, 1,000 points simply based upon, okay, that wasn't the best workout for you. And you kind of fell down a tier into a whole, uh, you know, another group of thousands of people who can do similar yeah. on that workout, which can completely ruin your own individual placement. Yeah. And I think the biggest, the biggest area for that improvement is, like we said, around those sticking point movements, whether it's how heavy are the snatches or the cleans that we've seen in the past couple of years or, or gymnastics movements. Um, but once you get to that kind of, what I'd say, upper tier, so when we're looking at maybe top 500 in the region, um, those, obviously everyone there is capable of doing all the movements. Everyone is capable of handling a pretty heavy load um, if you're gonna be averaging out in that top 500. Um, 
And once people are there, then the improvement starts to, to narrow a little bit. You know, you're not gonna make those sudden jumps of, well, I can beat 5,000 other people because I now have bar muscle ups. Well, everyone has bar muscle ups there. It's can you do those extra few reps? Yeah, I mean, an example of that, uh, just to give specific numbers, would be um, Megan Benzik's training from 2015 through 2017, right? So I started working with her in 2015. I believe she'd finished maybe 85th, 88th, something like that in the Open, right? So in, in the region. So pretty good, um, you know, not fantastic, but definitely a, a solid performance. Mm -hmm. um, made just unbelievable improvements in that year, right? Across the board, strength, endurance, upper body pushing and pulling, um, you know, open testers repeated, all that kind of stuff. Moved from 80 something to, I believe, 32nd, mm -hmm. right? So very solid bubble athlete and then continued to make massive improvements on everything across the board for another year, then went from 32nd to 19th, right? right? And actually you're in the spot of regional. So that's an example, it's like, okay, you are improving dramatically in everything, and in one year, that's a jump of 50 something spots, and then in the next year, that's a jump of 13 spots. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you have what we consider to be a young training age, so maybe you've only been doing CrossFit for a couple of years, all of a sudden, you can jump, you know, 500 places in a year, whereas once you've been training for you know four or five years, making a jump of 50 spots is huge. And if you're inside the top 100, jumping anything more than 20 spots is a, is a big improvement. Yeah, and I think it's also worth mentioning, um, you know, we hear a lot about not comparing ourselves to others, which is very relevant here, right? That it's not necessarily helpful to think too hard about like, oh, where am I gonna sit on this and, and how am I gonna, do this year and what place am I going to get because those are things that are out of your control but I think it's also very important to have somewhat realistic expectations for where you want to sit yeah. right because I think that a lot of people get themselves in trouble because they have expectations that are totally out of alignment with what the reality is and then they think that okay you know I was here this year and now this year I'm going to be top whatever I was top this now I'm going to be top this I was top that I'm going to be top that and when that doesn't happen, you know, they see after one or two weeks that that's not going to work for them, that then, you know, they may just end up quitting on the open altogether, which, right. you know, is simply a misalignment of their expectations relative to what's realistic. Yeah. Um, and I think on that point, the fact that every year there's more and more people doing the open, right? Um, invariably. And more people doing it seriously. Yeah. There's going to be people coming in above you in terms of ability or talent. There's gonna be people that maybe haven't been training as long as you, but they're just better athletes. You know, They've either been training in other disciplines or they're just naturally a more gifted athlete. And those kind of people, they can just jump into you know, top 300, top 200, without having years of training. And they may never get to that you know, regionals level, but there's enough people going in there that's gonna play with your score. So it's, you may have improved as an athlete, you may have got better year on year, but how's the rest of the field doing? How are those new people coming in doing? How's the person who beat you last year, maybe they've trained a little bit more. Maybe they pushed a little bit harder than you in the last year. Maybe they've made some key improvements that you haven't been able to make. Um, so it's as much as using the your open finish as a metric for improvement is nice, and everyone likes to see improvement, it's it's really just kind of a snapshot of your, of your overall um, ability and improvement as an athlete. Yeah, I mean, the, the actual open finish number has so many variables that are just completely out of anyone's control that it's, you know, it's, it's a nice indicator, but that in and of itself is not a data point that I would put a huge amount of value on. Right. Yep.